It's gonna be a passed ice of sweet teats. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Oh, good morning, BBs. It's too early. It sure is. Welcome to the first, best, and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. Oh, the sun is shining. The birds are singing. Yeah. And we have a horrible meltdown of a situation to talk about. So, you know, it's a Which perfect is our morning. Favorite kind. Oh. We just, we love, we love a, a man made disaster. You know how in all of the conspiracy theories, they'll show pictures of horrible events yeah. and there'll be one person who looks like they might be the same person, like a time traveler Ooh, yeah. or the Mothman or something. Of course. And uh, I I always look at those pictures and I go, I wish I was that person. Yeah. I wish I could be at every disaster. You've probably heard us say it on the show before, but we are two people that deeply wish we had gone to Fire Festival. Now it looks like I'm ignoring you, but I'm actually uh, dealing with the fact that I forgot to put my phone on silent, but I'm doing nice. it horribly. Okay. Yeah, um, I wish I'd yeah, been at Fire Festival. And then you call attention to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I'd been at Fire Festival. Oh, uh, I wish I'd been at Dashcon. I wish I, I, I wish I'd been at the Hindenburg. I wish I'd been at Tanacon. No, wait, hold on. What? What? Hmm? I felt like that was a little bit of a different. No, you were talking about, we're talking about just like, oh, that was bad. Like, ooh, yeah, what, a, what okay. a cringe situation is what we're yeah, talking about, yeah, right? Yeah. So like you brought up Dashcon. Tanacon. Tanacon. Fire Festival. The Titanic. Okay. Yeah. I wish I'd been at one of the world fairs where one of the weirdest things, you know, even when the McBarge got like yeah. displayed. Or the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. Okay. Are we on the same page? I don't think we are. I don't think we are. <laughs> or you know the World Fair when H.H. H. Holmes was there <laughs> right yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of a devil in the white city sort yeah. of situation yeah. is what I'm looking for <laughs> uh, I do wish that I'd been able to go to a World's Fair but that's because they looked amazing really I really do genuinely wish I could go to a World's Fair that but, looks really really fun uh, these uh, but these sort of disaster situations mm -hmm. are Oh, there's so It's what good. we live for. It's what we live for. It's what we live for. So we're going to talk to you about a big disaster situation that went down in uh, Glasgow. In Glasgow. I was just there. Yeah, I was. I, I was went to Glasgow. There. You did. Yeah. What'd, was, you, th what'd you think of it? Eh. Look, uh, I I went to Edinburgh. That mm -hmm. was the plan. And then when I was in Edinburgh, I was like, where can I take a train to? And the answer was Glasgow. But it was the week of Christmas. And it's all a shopping town. Yeah. It's all a shopping and disappointing immersive experience town. Uh, so there wasn't much to do. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, you know, I, I've been to, whenever you travel over the holidays, mm -hmm. it's always interesting because it's the only time you're going to get to be anywhere. Mm -hmm. But also it's the only time anybody else is going to get to be anywhere. Mm -hmm. So everybody is either a tourist or out of town, you know? And the city just has like a different vibe than it normally does during like during the year. And you never get you can't get like a real a real feel for a city when you travel over the holidays. No, yeah. You know? It depends on the place. I feel like Edinburgh nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. Perfect timing to be in Edinburgh. Glasgow, I was like, I couldn't see anything past the sea of people stressed before the holiday. Oh, I was going to say because of the fog. Ooh. Over the moors. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was also because of the fog over the moors. And the banshees. <laughs> Howling in the distance. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't see over that. You couldn't see because of the banshees and how loud they were. Yeah. You couldn't see because of the sound. It's like when you're uh, looking for an address and you have to turn the radio down mm -hmm. so you can see. Yeah. When you're trying to park and you have to turn the radio down so you can yeah, yeah, yeah. park and see. Shut up so I can read this, that yeah, sort of thing. exactly. Yeah, I get you. It's just like that when the banshees are, are out. When the banshees are out. Uh, what else are we talking about? Probably we got, nothing. We got a couple other things. We got some updates on on Avatar mm -hmm. and um, Skull and Bones and, yeah. you know, all of the weird things that are happening in the world. I, I, I got to say, the world's got a real weird vibe right now. Yeah. Not just the dark foreboding vibe that it normally has. No. But like a weird vibe. The world is bringing a kind of something's got to give energy to the party that I do not like. 
Yeah, it's your, the world is currently giving the vibe of your overworked friend at the retail job. Yeah. That's clearly getting a little manic before they totally shut down. Exactly, like, oh, hey, uh, the vibes are getting a little, a little much. Do you want to take a 15? I know you just took one. Do you want to take another 15? That's yeah. okay, I'll cover. Do you want to take it? It's fine. I'm good. Hey, the world? Yeah. You want to take a 15? I know you don't smoke, but go ahead, take a five. Yeah. You Maybe know what I'm saying? Uh, I think it's at the, there is so much big unfathomable things happening mm -hmm. that people are responding a little bit silly and that's the wrong response. Yeah. When something really bad happens to someone and they start laughing and it's not like a genuine like, ah, oh, you know, got a parking ticket and I'm laughing. Like something really genuinely bad is happening and the only trauma response they can muster is laughing. Yeah. And you're like, oh fuck. That's what the world feels like right now. Yes. That's that's 100 percent a correct read on it. I think, uh, yeah, we're everything's just everybody has turned into an absurdist. Yeah, without knowing what absurdism is, not on purpose. Yeah, yeah. they haven't they haven't chosen to do it, mm -mm. and so it, there's just a weird energy in the air. And I gotta tell you, nowhere was it weirder in this last week than in Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, yeah, Alex. How are you holding up during the weirdness? And what? <laughs> um, you know, I am a fan of chocolate and also Scottish people, so I feel like I would fit right in with the angry crowds. Yeah. Yeah. So angry crowds. Yep. In Scotland, you might be wondering, BBs, why? Why are people angry in Scotland? Why are people angry in Scotland? They have so many moors. Yeah. And. And cheese. Right. Well, Alex would actually be incredibly devastated because there is no chocolate in Glasgow, actually, no. Scotland. Uh, yeah, so here's what's going on. Over, over the last few weeks, people in Scotland, people in Glasgow, have been very excited to take their children, the whole family, uh -huh. to the Willy Wonka experience. Come I with me. love... Willy Wonka in exactly two iterations of Willy Wonka. Two. Two. The book. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. And the film. I was like, he can't be talking about the second movie. No. No. I'm talking, of course, about the Gene Wilder movie. Of course. Uh, which was absolutely amazing. And I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody who, who as a kid, didn't see Willy Wonka. Mm-hmm. Whatever version, even if you yeah, yeah. even if you grew up with whatever version, yeah, and didn't at least go. I want to go to that chocolate factory. No, nope. that thing is magical. No, nope. no, you didn't no. want to go. Yeah, I really wanted to be like, oh, I want to go die there in the chocolate factory. No, no, no. Because here's the thing. I'm a Charlie Bucket. I'm not a Mike TV. I'm not a Veruca Salt. I'm uh -huh. a good kid. I'm a good boy. Ah. Uh. If you go to the factory and you're a good kid, uh -huh. it's a magical wonderland experience. Also, I like that there's a little edge of danger as a kid. Mm. I enjoyed that. You know, it was not aspirational for me as a kid. Really? I was like, nah, seems like a bad idea. But what about a place like it? I mean, when they first open that door, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you see the chocolate river right. and the like the gum the gummy bears that are this big and all that, as a kid, you must at least go, oh. <gasps> I think I just, I think I was not a very whimsical child. Saved, I really think saved that I was, all that for later. I really do think that I was just entirely devoid of whimsy as a child. Yeah, you were. Uh, I think I saw that and I was like, unrealistic. See, now I was a little business boy. How does that work? We've talked about this. I yeah. was a little business boy. I had a right. briefcase. But I think I just enjoyed the, like, the whimsical idea of playing a business boy. Right. A, a, a briefcase full of donuts. Yeah, it was a briefcase full of candy, literally. Right. So, so I like, mean, I, on stream last night or two nights ago, Everybody was talking about what they wanted to be when they grew up as a child. And there were people that were like, I wanted to be a fire truck. And there were people that were like, I wanted to be like, you know, an animal at the zoo. Yeah. I wanted to be Steve Jobs. Yeah. I had no whimsy. No whimsy. There was no whimsy. I wanted to wear the turtleneck and I yeah. wanted to stand at the keynotes and show the, the computer I made. Well, that's the thing is, uh, it was the turtleneck that stopped you. Yeah. Uh, you know, 
as somebody who's got like a, a little touch of the tism, when you put on a turtleneck, you get real, really not you it. get real itchy. Yeah. So she couldn't do it. Nope. Um, that was it. But I think for a lot of kids, the idea of going to the magical candy land at uh-huh. the center of Willy Wonka's factory yes. was a big deal. Absolutely. And that's been somewhat revived uh, with most recently Twonka. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Twonka, which I watched the first five minutes of and I said, mm-hmm. you couldn't have possibly opened with this musical number in this way. And I turned the movie off. So I, 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 I watched it. I kept meaning to go back to it. Yeah. I'm Werner Herzogging it. Right. I'm watching it in five minute chunks. <laughs> uh, I watched the whole movie. Yeah. Awful. Absolutely god awful. One of the worst movies I've seen in a long time. I know there's a bunch of people, and I think there are even people in our community that like genuinely really sure. liked it. So I don't want to be an asshole, but damn, that's a bad movie. <laughs> I mean, it looked like, it, it, honestly, it was the director of Paddington and Paddington 2. So the, uh-huh. the, the, I'm sure like at least a lot of the visuals were on point. Yeah. Um. So I'm sure even for, even in the, the Twonka, there was, yeah. there was something in there where if you were a kid, you would go, I want to know Willy Wonka, and I want to know all about the magical chocolate, and that I want to be his friend. Yeah. And uh, uh, there was an experience in Glasgow, Scotland, Mm -hmm. over the last, that was was building up steam over the last couple months. Yeah. One of those pop-up museums. Which are so popular right now. We get them all the time. They're usually a lot of fun. So hot right now. Photo ops. Adults go to get their Instagram photos. People take their kids to take cute pictures of their kids. Yes, so there was a pop-up museum called Willy's Chocolate Wonderland. That sounds legally distinct. Or Willie's Magical Chocolate Boy Land for sure, children. Sure, sure enough. Uh, it was, it's called the Willie Chocolate, Willie's Chocolate Experience. And if you look at the website here, uh, this is making big, big promises. I've got the official site up here. Yeah. Uh, it says, indulge in a chocolate fantasy like never before. Capture the enchantment. I want to capture the enchantment. I would love to capture you some can, enchantment. Look at the areas you can go to. The enchanted garden. Whoa. Giant sweets, vibrant blooms, mysterious sculptures, and magical surprises. Navigate through peculiar but enchanting garden, collecting delicious beans of all colors, shapes, and sizes. I would love to go to that and delicious, collect beans. Delicious beans. Yeah. Not, not jelly beans, just delicious beans. Yeah, yeah, of different shapes and sizes. So sometimes they're not even bean-shaped, but huh. still a bean. And it also it would be like... I don't know how they do it in Scotland, but isn't in the UK, aren't they jelly babies? I don't know. Something's weird, but let's move on. Okay. Uh, then you get to the Imagination Lab, or as this si- sign says, the Imagination Lab. <laughs> <laughs> the Imagination Lab. And this is where I start going, something seems odd here. Uh-huh. Uh, this is a visual spectacle, mind-expanding projections, optical marvels, exhibits that transport you into the realm of creativity. Uh huh. I love this. They're talking about chocolate. They're talking about chocolate fountains. They're talking yeah. about. Yeah. They're talking about Oompa Loompas. Yeah. They're I ta- want to float. Yeah. They're talking about the, the Twilight Tunnel. You remember the the dark boat ride? Okay. They're in the middle of Willy Wonka. They're like, there's even kind of like a little bit of a scary experience, right? The Twilight Tunnel. Okay. Ooh. TM. Oh. Yeah. Uh, hey, they trademarked all these. Well, just I think yeah. Just imagine just the Twilight Tunnel and the Actually, Imagination yeah, Lab. Yeah, Imagination Lab and Twilight Tunnel TM. Yeah. Uh Enchanted Garden, they couldn't get. But what you really need to know, Sage, is that overall what this is gonna have for everyone is enchuring entertainment. It's gonna be catagatting. What is it's gonna be live performances with Karchi Tuns. It's gonna have Exarcer Dre lollipops. Hey. And a, it's gonna be a passed ice of sweet teats. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what is it's a passage I churning supposed to and churning. What is that word supposed to be? It's like scrum diddly umptious or everlasting gobstopper. It doesn't matter, Sage. It's Wonka, right? They're they're clearly having fun. Oh, it's intentional. It's intentional. It's not misspellings. It's not just a poorly generated AI image of a clown in a chocolate. Now, now factory. that you mention it, these images do have a little bit of that AI look to them, don't they? Yeah, like look at this lollipop. No, it's a great lollipop. Like when you zoom in on this one, this one's a little, a little, a little wonky, if you I, will. I want to know what's on Willard's lollipop right there. What is that symbol? What is that? Intru- what is that insuring symbol there? <laughs> I'm absolutely insuring. 
uh, I couldn't be more insured, and I I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> Look at his sleepy little eyes. He's so sleepy. One is sleepier than the other. No, that's very good, and it's definitely not House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah, Alex, will you give him my screen so we can zoom around on these? Yeah. Yeah, like, look at this just random floating object here. Yeah, it's good. Uh, That's really good. I'm scooting things around so we can see it. Uh, yeah. There's his very, very sleepy little eyes. He's just a this sleepy guy. Clown. Um. So this is, this seems a little off, but... Man, they are saying it's going to be amazing. They are saying that they've got all of these wonderful things. Look at the hands. Look at those are hands. It's one weekend only. Okay. So you got to get in there. Wow, yeah. Uh, it's happening at a huge, huge location in Glasgow at the Box Hub Warehouse. Okay. Um, and tickets are $44 a person. Okay, that's a little pricey for a photo op experience. But, but if it's I mean, an, if it's an immersive based show, based on what they're describing, they got projections. There's a tunnel. Yeah, you know, if I can see a butterfly that fucked up, I'm in. Yeah, anytime you can see a butterfly that's that fucked up. Uh, so look at all these little guys. A lot of a lot of kids, a lot of families, a lot of people in right. in Glasgow got very very excited mm -hmm. for what was going to happen paid their $45 paid their $45 paid their family tickets sometimes you know got the package yeah got the VIP experience uh -huh. and they were greeted at the door by this oompa loompa uh oh is that there she is <laughs> I beg your pardon? <laughs> That's the Oompa Loompa at the Magical Candy Lab. I, I beg your unbelievable pardon? She's definitely excited to be there. She is definitely not hungover from the night before. Uh, she is definitely excited, and she's definitely in a whimsical candy lab. And oh, look, if, uh, if we look on Sage's monitor, a she's not one. alone. A second one. <laughs> they cut those wigs with... Who knows what? <laughs> Honest to God, I mean, kitchen scissors isn't enough. The zigzag safety scissors. Uh, it's, it's something. And it's smoking, which is kind of, could be like a candy lab thing. But what's interesting here is I actually don't see any, any chocolate on this table. Well, let's take a little bit more of a tour, Sage, over here on okay. my monitor, and I'll show you some of the uh, some of the wondrous things that are in store for you mm -hmm. as you enter Willie's uh, Chocolate Wonderland. Okay. Uh, first of all, here you can see the gorgeous uh, entry into the magical wonderland. This is not backstage. This is the, uh, this is the rainbow gate that you walk through in order to get into the magical wonderland. Uh, and then once you're in, I mean, look at that. You can see one whole gummy bear next to a table. Uh, there's where you get the VIP check in. Let me just zoom in so you can sort of see, I believe this might be the tunnel. Is that a bounce house? Uh, no, that's a twilight tunnel and it's trademarked Sage. Oh, uh, my bad. I, the I'm twilight tunnel for Willie, for Willie's chocolate experience is definitely the ball pit from Dashcon. And somebody also pissed in this one. Yeah. Uh, so there's the Twilight Tunnel, if you can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, just just the exciting time. It's in churning, really. <laughs> hey, I am absolutely in chored. Now, tell me about this. Well, it's it takes a lot of magic and engineering, uh -huh. which we call Imagineering. And uh, it's trademarked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by the company who put this on, the House of the Illu the House of Illuminati. Uh -huh. uh, in order to change a standard warehouse uh -huh. into a magical wonderland, it takes a lot of technology. We're talking model makers, we're talking painters, we're talking projectionists, mm -hmm. we're talking uh, running painters, to the- artists. Yeah, we're talking running to the Kinkos yeah. and getting a banner printed the yeah. night before. Oh. Just one banner. Well, I mean, they, you know- It's a large- They're gonna promise photo ops, right? Yeah. So these, this was your photo op. Well, well, okay. I there was the VIP photo op stage, yeah. which is which is oh, right here, separate. Yeah, you can tell because of the red velvet rope <laughs> that's on the floor. <laughs> of course it is. Of course it's on the floor. Um, wow. Bring your kids. Get insured is what I would say. Um, get, can we, Sage? I, let's take a look at. 
just a, a bird's eye view here uh -huh. of the entire Wonderland. This is it. This is it. What a magical place. Now, if you if you shoot with your camera in just exactly this direction, there it, this is where you will get the most Wonka. Yeah. This is the most Wonka. This is the most Wonderland. Yeah, that you're going to get. Uh-huh. Uh, if you turn around in the other direction, it does just look like an empty warehouse. Right. Uh, or look up or look slightly to the left. <laughs> but that's the thing about mm -hmm. Imagineering. Yeah. That's the thing about creating a, right. a, a magical experience. You you well, have to chocolate suspend your disbelief a little bit, right? Okay, and I'm in for that. You have to listen. It's part of the it's part of the imagination of the children that turns this in from uh, what I would imagine is an abandoned butcher uh -huh. into a magical chocolate wonderland. You know, uh, and and I think they did a job. Now, somebody, I think they did a job. Somebody Sage. in the live studio audience was like, "That's more of a five dollar, no zero dollar, yeah. no dollars." We were uh, no dollars. Alex and I were discussing this a little bit before the show, and I was saying this looks like what one motivated mother would put together overnight for a birthday party. Yes, like that, like a really motivated mother, and everybody the next and day I would said, be like, "I'm oh, gonna do better." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And everybody oh, would everybody nice. would be like, "Wow, I love the rainbow." Yeah, you really did it. I can't believe you put all this together yourself. Yeah. The kids are gonna love it. You know? Uh huh. No, this is a forty four dollar pop up museum experience. Uh, this is put together, by the way, um, by a company called House of Illuminati, which is an interesting name for a company that is organizing a children's event. Well, House of Illuminati, yeah, it is a little odd, but they. You know, this Wonka thing is just one of the things they do, Sage. Well, uh, really quickly, before we move on from the experience. Yeah. There must have at least been like incredible treats, right? Like uh, fresh baked goods. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or like chocolates everywhere, yeah, right? Have, like uh, big, big things of chocolate. Yes, I saw like a chocolate and I, and river. I want to I get into all that, but uh -huh. uh, they're, they're, cause you expect the treats. Yeah. You expect you expect the, the magical candies, you expect things that you couldn't get anywhere else. Yeah. Because or at least Wonka branded chocolate, which is available in grocery stores. Right. Uh, and that's why I want to dive in a little bit into the House of Illuminati so you can okay. see you can see the artistry at work here. Got it. You know, so you can see what they would bring to this experience. Yeah. In the details, you know. Um, this is their site, uh, which looks like it has just as much work put into it as the Wonka site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably written and the image is done by the same guy. And by guy, I mean uh, OpenAI's uh, generous API capabilities. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm looking at their events here, and they don't really list any. They just list what- Mystique Galas. Yeah, Mystique Galas. What does that mean? You know- Mystique. It's like imagineering. It's like insuring. Secret soirees. Yeah, very secret. Techno mythical. Yeah, they're techno mythical. You remember what that? You that? remember that video game, Robot Unicorn Attack? Yeah. They made this. Wow. It was techno mythical. Wow. Yeah. It's not just something that you would hear screamed out in an Adventure Time Always cartoon. I wanna be with you. I wanna be with you. Um, I think that game shaped my music taste a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of people. Uh, you know, but when you try to dive in, something is a little odd. Mm -hmm. uh, but based on what these people say, Sage, you would imagine they are used to developing very cool and interesting things. They are uh, they're good at the detail work. They're gonna they're gonna get all this together and and give you a magical experience. Yeah, with actors and candy, mm -hmm. and all the things that you would expect, except yeah. uh, there was no candy. None. No, there was no candy. There were no, there's no candy. You can't, there was, there is no candy. There was no candy, no chocolate, but you could get uh, like a, like a quarter of a can of limeade. Yeah, they were giving kids one, one glass of limeade, not, not the can, they were splitting the can, mm -hmm. like like these kids were flying coach into hell. Right. <laughs> uh, 
so you could not have it. Yeah, it was very it was very much a bring your own chocolate situation. Yeah. There was no chocolate. Yeah. Uh there were no chocolate fountains. The chocolate was in your mind and your heart and your yeah. mag and there you can see some of the uh some of the great refreshment table. Yeah. Um looking good. Love just open beverages too. Looking Big like fan of that. Looking like crafty at a um at a <laughs> Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Oh my god! Uh, looking like crafty on a student film. Yeah, you know. Yeah, hundred percent. Just absolutely uh, one table, f- one pizza, uh huh, and some solo cups. And everybody goes, "What do we put in the solo cups?" And the answer is pizza because yeah. the dude forgot to buy plates. No plates. Sorry. Uh, that's who put together this event. You have to imagine it. With your imagination. With your, you have to mag, imagination the nurturing experience. This whole thing gives the vibe of that that meme where a celebrity, a fake celebrity, DMs somebody, you know, like, "Oh, Willy Wonka, I'm uh-huh. your biggest fan, but how do I know it's really you?" Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's me, Willy Ronka, and I need $43. That guy from Catfish that thought he was in a relationship with Katy Perry. Yeah, exactly. Because he's like, uh, who else would know what town she's from? <laughs> I was able to confirm on Google that was correct. <laughs> uh, so yeah, these kids- So let's these talk kids more about have, House of Illuminati Let's then. talk about them, because these these kids showed up to an mm-hmm. experience. Yeah. Uh. And there were actors. There were actors. Sage, there were actors. Um, there was a Willard, a Willard Wonka. Yeah. Oh a, a, a Waladar Wonkowitz, as uh-huh. he was known before uh Ellis Island. He was there. Mm-hmm. Yep. He was hired apparently the day before. And it was handed a like... script of 15 pages. Uh-huh. With no details. Okay that he had to memorize in the morning and he was reading the pages of this script. Yeah. And he was like, are we, you have all this stuff and we're not doing tech rehearsal? And the guy was like, yeah, 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 we're getting, we're getting it all together. Yeah, it's okay, don't worry about it. It's like, well, at the end, I use a, I use a vacuum to vacuum up the villain. That's, you have that? You have a vacuum? And the guy's like- The villain can go into? Yeah, and the guy goes, we're gonna kind of figure that out in the moment. (laughs) Uh, this, okay. is a, this is a local stand-up comedian that was hired yeah. to, to come in and be Willy Wonka. Hey, he's getting a ton of free press from this. Yeah, he went online to literally apologize. Like, he yeah. went public to apologize. He's like, I don't want to be associated with this because this is a train wreck. Yeah. Because when these kids saw what was going on and these parents saw what was going on, the police were called. Yeah. The police were See, called. there's two reasons I feel like you could call the police in this scenario. One, it's like, hey, this is a grift. They stole my money. And the other is, I do think we're in danger in this warehouse. Yes. I do think something frightening is going to happen to us in this warehouse. And that might be what they're calling the unknown. Mm. So the unknown is a new villain introduced to the Wonkaverse in this uh, in this scenario yes. for the immersive experience. There had to be, you know, a, a villain, right? There had to be somebody uh, to oppose Willy Wonka, and that is the evil chocolatier. Yes, the other chocolatier that is bad. It's described. That's called the unknown. It's described in the script as a dark chocolate maker who lives in the walls. And I re- the gentleman who was playing Willy Wonka, who is a stand-up comic, was like, I don't understand. Does that mean he's an evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls? Or, or he does he dark make chocolate. dark chocolate? You know dark chocolate is a thing. Yeah. Uh, the idea in the script is that the, the nothing or the unknown, the unknown, the unknown is trying to uh, is trying to ruin the chocolate factory and everybody's time. And uh, we do have a video that we are going to play. Yeah. Uh, of what actually happens when these children meet the unknown. All right. Let's Can we see. play it with audio? Yeah. Yeah. Please do. Okay. What is that? It's the unknown. What is that? It's the unknown. No. One more time, one more time. It's the end of- no. <laughs> I'd like to dissect what's happening here. 
can what we bring? What is that? It's the unknown. Can you bring no. up? Can you bring up the frame where the unknown has popped up from behind? Uh, of course I can. The darkness. Well, of course uh, I can. Here's what's going on in this frame. <laughs> A man, a, a, a man who is standing behind a target standing mirror. One of those that you have to hang on a door. It can't even stand. Yeah, it looks like he might be holding it up in front of a <laughs> towel that they that they put in front of that for a reason. Uh, I guess that's the wall yeah. that he comes out of. Uh, he comes out in a uh, Doctor Doom mask. <laughs> In a, yeah. in a leg city, leg avenue, Dr. Doom mask. And a black cloak. And just starts twitching at children. Um, that's it. That's, that's it. the unknown. That's the unknown. And you know what? The correct response is, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'll be cool. It's too frightening, Alex. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> now, that was written in the script as the unknown literally coming out from the walls in a in a horrible maze mm -hmm. in the in the twilight in the twilight tunnel mm -hmm. uh truly truly nightmarish uh now that's in the script that's in the but script the script has gone public the script has gone public now uh, i just imagine you're you're hired uh -huh. by a company and you're set and to play Willy Wonka in a live theater experience. Yeah. And you show up, and that's what it looks like. How do you not turn and walk away and go home? Here's the thing, Anthony. We said it at the beginning of the show. I mean, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I, I would wouldn't. absolutely see this out. I gotta see what happens next. I have to know. I is have what to I would know. Say. Um, now, but the but as the. <laughs> It's just, it's just the the children, Sage, mm -hmm. just crying. Yeah. Uh, apparently, according to parents, the children were just crying the entire time. Crying from disappointment. Yeah. Then, Fear of that creature climbing out from behind a mirror. Absolutely bananas. I I have to say, I don't know how they thought that they would get away with this. <laughs> uh, I don't know how they thought that this could happen. Do you think they thought work. it was good? No. Well, that's the thing is I do want to get into uh, what is like what's going on with House of Illuminati. Uh, I do want. I'd like to do that, and then I, I do want to talk about that, and we we will like I want to take a look at this script, but like I want to know how this happened. Yeah. So you do have access to the script, right? I do on there. So what I'd like to do is we go through. We investigate House of Illuminati a little mm -hmm. bit here. And then I think we should read some from yeah, the script. Yeah, absolutely. I think we should do a little bit of a reading of this script. Yeah, absolutely. But I wanna I wanna talk about House of Illuminati. Yeah. I, I want to discuss them. I wanna discuss how this happened. House of Illuminati is run by, no lie, a gentleman named Billy McCool. <laughs> That's right, Billy McCool. Yeah. Uh, House of Illuminati has a beautiful website that we showed you earlier, the front page. That is so hard to read, It's too. so hard to read. When you get into their blogs, they use a dark gray font and a black background. Yeah. It's kind of like they don't want you to read it. Well, there's a reason why a lot of things related to this might look broken at this point. Uh -huh. And we'll get into that, too. Yeah. Uh, but when I tried to look for actual events, Uh-huh. On the they House of Illuminati, yeah, the House of Illuminati site. There isn't one on, on the Our Events page. You have to kind of dig into their blog. Okay. Uh, and when I dug into their blog, I found this page here, which says, "From ordinary to extraordinary, transformative events at the House of with the House of Illuminati," because okay. they want to make big, exciting events, right? Yeah. Uh, this looks like the same warehouse. It does. That they put slinkies on. Oh. For a wedding. A wedding? Yeah, it turns out previous to this, the House of Illuminati really only planned like two weddings. And one was just covering it in slinkies. Yeah, they Here's might, they might have got, they might have given the slinky package to both. That could have been some, pictures from two weddings. There's some Rubik's cubes in there. This is, here's what I will say. This is, this looks so much better 
than oh, the Wonka experience. That's way better than the Wonka experience. Now, if, I'd if, be upset if I had to get married in it. Don't now, get me wrong. if I showed up to this bar mitzvah, I'd be like, this is a cool yeah, bar mitzvah. That would be a cool bar mitzvah. This is a cool bar mitzvah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a wedding, I don't know. Right. <gasps> Greetings, dear readers. They sound like Timothy Chalamet in mm -hmm. Wonka. Mm -hmm. House of Illuminati welcomes you back to our blog where we unravel the magic behind transformative events. In this edition, we explore the journey from the ordinary to the extraordinary, showcasing how every celebration becomes a testament to our commitment to turning moments into memories that linger. Okay. I know that we talked and about this. Just the, that picture. I know that we talked about this the other day but you can say it now. You can say that this was written by AI. You can AI. say it was written by AI, this everybody. Was, this one was this made one. by AI. You're allowed to say it. Remember when we told you save it for when it's real? Yeah. It's real. Here it is. It's, Here it is. <laughs> this is what it said. It, welcome back to the blog. In this edition, it's like, yeah. it's, he literally put into the prompt, Yeah. magical event described like wizard. Right. <laughs> you are a you are a professional blogger. Describe this like this. Now, when you go to their events page, uh huh. Hey, they, they do, don't have no. There's no event. There's no event. There's just the idea of events. That's right. But I, they they show these these things off, Sage. We've got some UK BBs, and I just have mm -hmm. a quick question for the UK BBs. Sure. Would you feel like the things that uh, we've shown so far um, draw inspiration from Glasgow's local treasures, infusing events with elements that resonate with the city's identity? Yeah, Glasgow famously. Yeah known for the invention of the slinky. Yeah. Uh, would you say that you're witnessing the seamless integration of local nuances and global elegance, creating a harmonious tapestry that defines the House of Illuminati experience in Glasgow? Yes. Glasgow was known for Albus, Mc, Albus McSlink. Uh-huh. <laughs> The inventor of the slinky. Yeah, and then when we scroll up, I'm I'm looking at this image. Would you feel like that maybe is like capturing kind of the the global identity and local nuance? Yeah, of the UK. I think of the UK. Uh, listen, to be fair, yeah, most people outside of the UK think of the UK. They think of Harold Patner and the Wizard of Turf. Yeah, so this so that's uh, close. very low res pixelated picture of a witch. Well, it's low res because. Uh, to have the AI make a bigger image uh -huh. is more expensive. Okay, got it. <laughs> it actually, most of the AIs only do like a small image and then you've got to up res them yourself. Uh, this is nightmarish. I want to say like, they did, a, they did a blog about the making of the chocolate experience. Oh, that's exciting. That's, I bet, you know, I bet they accurately described what people were going to get. I don't know about that, but what I do know is that they showed off this thing as their as their main image, which isn't even from the event. Which again, they that clearly photo, stole this photo. That photo is definitely from two thousand and one. Yes. Can we show it to him? There we go. Um, that photo is definitely from two thousand and one. Like it feels like they had to crop out the little date in the bottom right corner of that from a digital camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, it's not great. Now, it's this was posted great. December 12th, 2023, and they say, get ready to embark on a journey into a world where dreams taste like chocolate as we approach the much anticipated Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory experience. Let's explore the immersive delights that promise to make this event a celebration of sweetness and imagination. Delectable chocolate fountains, whimsical performances, surprises at every turn, an adventure in every bite. Wow. Hey, um, as a matter of fact, like I would love if right now we could just cut to, I've got one of the magical, magical performances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whimsical, magical performances. There she is. This says the event comes alive what, with the whimsical Dot. performances of the iconic Oompa Loompas. Old Dot doesn't look whimsical in this photo, but I'm telling you, she's the most whimsical of all of us. Yeah. I'll tell you, she's, yeah. she's full of whimsy. Whimsical dot, we call her. Yeah, these singing companions guide attendees through the immersive wonders of Willy Wonka's world, adding an extra layer of charm to an already magical experience from harmonious melodies to lively dances. The Oompa Loompas are sure to captivate and entertain. Alex, I got a picture of them uh, of them doing one of their uh, dances. Can you show it? <laughs> wow. Captivating. Wow. Harmonious. Truly captivating. 
It's amazing. Well, they did also specifically say that there would be chocolates by uh, beyond the visual and auditory treats, the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory experience promises an adventure in every bite, which they already said. From sweet delicacies to chocolatey wonders, attendees will have the opportunity to explore and indulge in the many facets of this beloved treat. It's not just an event, it's a celebration of chocolate in all its delightful forms. But they forgot but to get no, any chocolate. There's no chocolate. Well, because it's a celebration of chocolate. It's like... <laughs> nope, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> How it's would, like... <laughs> no. Don't. <laughs> It's like how there's no Holocaust at the Holocaust Museum. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's your second one of the day, dude. <laughs> you know what hey, I mean? How, what? I want to preface once again that we're both Jewish. Yeah. Uh, this is a building full of Jews. Um, and I do, so I want to start with that before I say, what about this experience really keeps bringing, like really keeps making you think of, of, the, Hinden, of, the, of the Hindenburg, of the, the Titanic, the and the Holocaust. <laughs> well, you also had an Ellis Island joke earlier. Yeah. So well, like, no, Ellis Island isn't a joke. That's just people come through Ellis Island. I get it. But like the changing of names mm -hmm. and all. Um, what keeps bringing you back to this? What my, do you feel like is giving you... Um, my heritage. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Do you think maybe it's, maybe it's that photo? <laughs> Wait. This, this gorgeous photo of Dot? No. <laughs> what would be what would be giving me va bad vibes of this gorgeous photo of Dot? You know what's so funny and so tragic for these women that were the Oompa Loompas? Uh, here is a normal photo of one of our our performers mm -hmm. here. Uh, this is from <laughs> an article where she also came out and was like, "Yeah, this is not not good. Uh, we we shouldn't have done that." All of the actors involved so far have been like, yeah, that was me. And maybe I'll get some TikTok followers from this by saying this is no good. Look, uh -uh. <laughs> if you're an actor and you're trying to work and yeah. you're trying to just make money, stay employed, yeah. do your thing. You take a lot of gigs like this. Yeah. I worked uh, like I worked party gigs before. Yeah. Like I've worked I've worked event gigs like that before. You you hope you show up and uh -huh. it's not this. Yeah, I was a Santa's helper. I was a little elf. Yeah, you had a terrible time. I did. Yeah. Um. Now, Kara Lewis, one of the uh, performers as Oompa Loompas, said the same thing. They were given the script. They had one night to learn it. Uh, but then also said that on the day of, they were told to just abandon it and improvise. Yeah. Yeah. The The script is really something. They said, even we had mid been made to believe that this would be an incredible experience. However, almost everything mentioned in the script wasn't even there. And they said uh, they were given, uh, the script was given to the group promising a good giggle. That it would just bring a good giggle. Just a good giggle. Um, the script is absolutely wild. Shall we? Uh, yeah, I think we should probably get into this script. Uh, okay, so let's assign out some characters here first. Mm -hmm. um, the first page is blank. Incredible start. Second page, really gross logo, AI generated. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so this is, this is, um, wow, okay. Yeah. Wow, well, okay. I want to I start off here, number I one. I also was only given this script. I think uh, we should do the scene well, with uh, Willie and the Unknown. Yeah. Well, let me, let me, st let's start this off here. Uh-huh. Um, the script is called Wonky Doodles at McDuff's Chocolate Factory, colon, a script. A script. <laughs> That's right. Wonky Doodles at McDuff's Chocolate Factory, a script. Willie McDuff, introduction and audience interaction before entering the Garden of Enchantment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Scene, a whimsical, brightly lit stage that hints at the magic of the Garden of Enchantment Beyond. Uh -huh. Willie McDuff. Uh-huh. Legally distinct from sure, Willy Wonka. Of and that's the best kind of distinct you can of be. Of course. Mm -hmm. A character of eccentric charm and wit stands before the curtain that separates the mundane from the magical. The audience is buzzing with anticipation. Okay. Uh 
Now, to put in the script that the audience is buzzing with generation, with 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 excitement or whatever, was very bold. Yeah. Well, it does give a lot of stage direction for the audience uh-huh. in this script. Okay. Like it, it really does just mention what the audience is doing or will do at any given time. Sure. Uh, for instance, uh, Willie McDuff says, "Ah, I see we have some enthusiasts among us, but before we proceed, a few formalities." Well. Not so formal. If I have anything to say about it, stage direction winks. Mm -hmm. And then it says, um, the audience laughs and the audience applauds. That's not something you get to choose. Mm -hmm. But they did put it into the script. The audience applauds. Yeah. You see, the the Garden of Enchantment isn't just any garden. Oh, no. It's a place where the trees whisper secrets of old. The flowers sing in harmony. And the stones... Well, they mostly just sit there, but they do it enchantingly. <coughs> audience laughs. Uh huh. Really, just says audience laughs. Yeah, I'm sure that's what happened after that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's a lot of wild stuff in here because the script is being written by AI, right? And so, and it's just being told, "Hey, here's a scene. Write the scene." Uh, and so it's doing whatever the fuck it wants. Sure. And you see that as we get into, uh, as we get deeper into it and we go to in the garden of enchantment with Willie McDuff and the wonky doodles. What the fuck are the wonky doodles? Well, they're, they're not Oompa Loompas. That's for sure. And if any lawyer asks, I'll tell them the same. Now. Okay. Uh, I think we got to tap Alex in for this. Um, <laughs> uh, Alex, d- do you want to take a uh, wonky doodle number two? Yes. Okay. I do. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll be wonky doodle number one. Sure. You are of course, Willie McDuff. Yep. That's me. Willie McDuff. All right. Um, these pages so, aren't numbered. So, you know, so, uh, this scene here, uh, just so you, just so you know, it says the stage transforms into a vibrant mystical garden of enchantment Uh filled with oversized colorful flowers, twinkling lights, and mysterious pathways. Yeah. Willie McDuff, with his distinct attire and a sparkle in his eyes, is joined by the playful wonky doodles. Uh, It's me, I'm a playful wonky doodle. Can we, Alex, I've got a picture of the playful wonky doodle right now, if we can bring it up. Yeah, just as as a reminder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Each holding baskets brimming with an assortment of whimsical treats, as pictured. Ah, welcome. Welcome to the heart of the Garden of Enchantment, a place where wonders never cease. (laughs) And the sweets are as enchanting as the surroundings. Okay. Uh, Alex, just get in here. Um, (laughs) Yeah, that's a weird... Back and forth between that camera. Yeah, that's... All right. Uh, Oops. It seems even the stones want a taste of our treats. Now, we should say, tripping over a pretend stone, sweets flying everywhere. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, we're reading stage direction. We're doing this in a table read. Somebody's got to do it. Otherwise, how will the the BBs know? Okay, okay, great. Uh, That's that's you now. Yeah. Audience laughs as Wonky Doodle 2 gathered the the treats, turning the mishap (laughs) into a playful act. (laughs) How playful. Uh, Careful there, our garden stones are known to be quite the sweet tooths. Now, dear guests, feel free to explore, but beware of the giggle grass. It's been known to induce spontaneous laughter. Audience members are encouraged to move around and interact with the set pieces, including the giggle grass, which, when stepped on, triggers hidden speakers to play laughter sounds. Handing out peculiarly shaped candy. Try this, it's our latest creation, the whiz bang whirly gig. Just be sure you're not standing upside down when you eat it, or you might find yourself floating. And if anyone encounters our talking tulips, do pay them a compliment. They've been a bit wilting lately, and a kind word goes a long way in this garden. Audience members engage with the interactive flowers offering compliments, to which the flower responds, pre-recorded, whimsical thank yous. Like in Mario Wonder. Yeah, of course. (laughs) Oh, 
And if you see a butterfly, whisper your sweetest dream to it. They're our official secret keepers and dream carriers of the garden. Now I must ask, has anyone seen the elusive bubble bloom? It's a rare flower that blooms just once every blue moon and fills the air with shimmering bubbles. The stage crew discreetly activates bubble machines, filling the area with bubbles, causing excitement and wonder Quick. among the audience. Each bubble holds a whisper of enchantment. Catch one and make a wish. <laughs> Remember, in the Garden of Enchantment, as every moment is a chance for magic, every corner hides a story, and every bubble holds a dream. Uh, I just want to point out, I just want to remind you, it's an empty fucking warehouse. Uh, he opened uh, could could an empty warehouse do this? He opens his hands and the bubble gently pops, releasing a small twinkling like a light that ascends into the rafters, leaving the audience in awe. No, he didn't. No, he did not. No, he did not do that. Scene ends with the audience fully immersed in the interactive magical experience. Laughter and joy filling the air as Willie McDuff and the wonky doodles continue to engage and delight with their enchanting antics and treats. Um, no, they didn't. Uh, <laughs> the script says otherwise, and the script that I just generated off of Chat GPT, where Willy Wonka has the slight vibes of a serial killer, but is fighting against a, a child eating creature called the Unknown, uh, which is right here, which says, Ah, greetings, my dear Unknown. What a pleasure it is to have you grace my humble factory with your presence. The Unknown says, Wonka, Wonka. <laughs> you dare to welcome me as if I am your friend? Do you not know the terror I strike into the hearts of children everywhere? Indeed, my dear unknown. Your reputation precedes you. But might I dare suggest that there's more to you than meets the eye? Beneath that fearsome exterior lies a creature of intellect and sophistication, I presume. Are you trying to seduce me? <laughs> <laughs> I assume so. Why else would I be saying this? Uh, this script that Sage just generated off of ChatGPT <laughs> is better, which means he was using a worse AI, which means he didn't want to pay for the chat GPT. And so he yeah. was using like a local AI that you can run on your own computer. Yeah. And it was making a worse job of it. I mean, like, look, I don't pay for chat GPT. I just went to the website. Yeah. This is my favorite line. So Willy Wonka says, ah, but you see my dear unknown, which he says my dear every single time. In yeah. Cause this. that's, that's whimsy. We share a common interest, albeit from different sp uh, different perspectives. While you seek to devour the innocent, mm -hmm. I strive to delight them with confectionary wonders beyond their wildest dreams. Might there be a way for us to find a common ground? And this is actually Wait. from the Senate floor. Uh, this is actually a script of Democrats and Republicans yeah. uh, arguing for who should have human rights. That's now, the thing. I you can that tell you that chat. Want yeah, you can tell that chat AI, like when they say they don't take it from things. Right. You can see exact sources. Yeah. And there was an exact moment in the house where it's like, you look to devour the innocent. Right. And I look to give them little treats, but we could probably find a middle ground between yeah, there, that. There's probably something. I'm right? willing to compromise. I'm willing to meet you halfway to devouring children. Yeah, which would be nibbling on children. Yeah. I don't like it. Uh, and I don't like what's going on with this script. Uh, it gets worse and worse and worse. I do want to talk about the unknown. Like, there's a bubble and lemonade room. There's an imagination lab. There's there's supposed to be a TV thing. None the, of these things exist. The anti-graffiti gobstopper showdown. What is that? Well... That's the final that's the final battle between Willie McDuff and the unknown sage. The anti-graffiti gobstopper is a gobstopper that's supposed to make sure that everybody um o obeys the law. The excitement within the imagination lab reaches a crescendo as the guests gather around for an unprecedented spectacle. The lights dim and the spotlight illuminates. Oh, so there's no spotlight. There's not Willie even one McDuff spotlight. Standing at the end of the room, holding the last anti-graffiti gobstopper in his hand, opposite him, shrouded in darkness, emerges the unknown with a device that emits a sinister glow. The air crackles with anticipation. Yeah. Hey, air can't anticipate well it's just crackling with the anticipation you know of, of the people around you know you know what i mean it's it's uh it's more of a vibe you know it's a vibe 
The unknown says, sneering, that's right, Macduff. Imagine the chaos, the absolute power of turning tidiness into turmoil. Hand it over and I might consider sparing your precious lab. In the spirit of imagination and the pursuit of joy, I cannot let it happen. If it's a showdown you want, it's a showdown you'll get. Suddenly the room transforms into a battlefield of lights and lasers. Willie uses a device resembling a futuristic remote, activating traps and illusions around the lab to thwart the unknown's advances. I have a picture of this happening in the live show. Can we show it, Alex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Dodging beams of light. You think these parlor tricks will stop me? I've come too far to be foiled now. He retaliates with his own device, shooting beams of light towards Willie, who skillfully evades them, using the lab's inventions as shields and counters. This was delivered to the actors the night hey, before. Uh, this time I do actually have a photo of the lab's inventions that would, would shield yeah, and can evade. We show, can we show the lab's inventions, please? Yeah, if we could just show the, the lab's inventions really quick that would shield and evade. Um, Dot's really into thwart. this scene. This is, this is where yeah. Dot really shines. This is how he thwarts. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this script was delivered to the actors the night mm -hmm. before. The night before. Yeah. No rehearsal needed. No rehearsal needed. For what? Rehearsal for what? for what? It's a vibe. Are you or are you not Willy Wonka? I'm sorry, Willy McDuff. The guests cheer as the unknown is gently swept up by a robotic vacuum, humorously ending the confrontation. Now, this is where the poor actor who was hired to be Willy Wonka did ask, he was like, you, do you even have a vacuum? And they went, we'll figure that out on the day. The day is tomorrow. <laughs> the day is tomorrow, sir. Good day, sir. As Willy Wonka might say. $44 people paid. They showed up. This was the script. Uh-huh. The ads were running constantly. Apparently, if you were in the Glasgow area, uh -huh. the ads were running incessantly. It was like, it's like any pop-up in your town. Uh -huh. They just, they show up on your Instagram. They show up on TikTok. They show up on, on whatever it is you're on. Facebook, they're all over it. Yeah. And so people were really expecting for months, for months, you could buy these tickets in advance. And they showed up to a bounce castle uh -huh. in an empty warehouse. What a nightmare. What an absolute nightmare. I'm trying to see if anywhere online they've said how many tickets were sold. So far, we have not found anything of the so sort. So I, there were about 850 people is what I read throughout the weekend. Because, you know, these things, they run for a weekend and they do constant rotating tours. Uh-huh. So they sold about 850 tickets. Um, and uh, they've said that they're going to be refunding people. A lot of people have said that they have gotten a refund. Okay. Um, but not everybody. I'm waiting on the response from House of Illuminati. Well, the response from House of Illuminati, Sage, has been to disappear, much like the Illuminati themselves. Uh, the Billy McCool has scrubbed <laughs> all of his social media. He used to have a YouTube channel where he uh, unsurprisingly uh, showed himself as sort of a business guru and life coach. Oh, okay. Um, he's also something of a prolific author. He had oh. 17 books available on Amazon that are all now unavailable for purchase. How interesting. Uh, yeah, House of, the, House of Illuminati seems to have completely disappeared. There was apparently one, uh, one video that was made in response by Billy Okay. That has since been pulled off of Facebook and nobody got it before it got pulled. Damn. I also found a statement oh, on Facebook. A, a statement from, from Billy Cool? Yes. Uh, do you want me to read it out? Yes, yes please. please. Okay, fantastic. Uh, this is a Facebook post on the House of Illuminati Facebook post that says, I have been made aware of a Richard Bone saying he is part of this company he is not. I have no idea who he is or why he is posting what he has. I am truly sorry for any upset and disappointment caused at the weekend. Refunds have been issued and will continue to do so. I am not staying at my family home. 
I would kindly ask that you please leave my loved ones, my family, and friends of this. Again, no one by the name of Richard Bone is in any way, shape, or form in represents the House of Illuminati. The form he is using is designed to mislead you. This now, was an event wait, gone wrong. Wait, he's trying to Willy Wonka the Willy Wonka he's thing. Trying- he's saying that there's a he's saying that there's a secret wraith, uh, 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 an evil Billy, an uh, an anti Billy named Richard Bone. Richard what? Bone only walks in darkness and seeks to harm the children and take their forty four dollars. Hey, Bone. Unknown coincidence? I think not. Who is trying to sully Billy McCool's good name or Billy Cool's good name? McCool. Billy Cool's good name. The, now, Richard Bone has been following him since they were young lads at uh-huh. boarding school. Yeah. He's been trying to get the cool family fortune, you see, and the access to the cool family secrets. Oh. Uh, this is really wild. When we started looking into Billy Cool, uh-huh. uh, things were not cool. It was Billy not very cool. Um, the 17 books that Billy has placed onto Amazon were all put onto Amazon at the same day. Okay. 17 books dropped. Wow. Two years ago, all clearly written by AI. Uh huh. However, all of them had some very. QAnon and uh, general conspiracy theorist general themes. General conspiracy. One of the books was about uh, was was about a, a girl trying to trying to escape the the dark underworld of uh, of just of, of of child entrapment and and being sent around. And like it was clearly just based on QAnon, Comet Pizza, like weird. Do you think he actually wrote the books? I think he wrote some parts of the books. Because like here I am again of like, oh, like he's he's an AI guy. He's an AI guy, but you didn't get anything about that stuff when you put Willy Wonka fights a villain called the unknown. You have to tell the AI a little bit. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. He's yeah. writing prompts for books. Yeah, he's writing the prompts. Because he's not writing 17 books. No. This dude couldn't make three props. Oh, no, no, no. All the books were written by AI. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the, we, that's... That is known. Like <laughs> okay. we, we, yeah, we said that from go. Got it. Seventeen books, clearly written by AI. Got it. Um, they've all been taken off of the Amazon marketplace. Uh huh. And uh, he also apparently has a bit of a history in Glasgow. Okay. Uh, there were there was an event around Christmas time a few years ago mm-hmm. that was a toy drive. That was supposed to have like a community event at the end with like some like Santas and like a fun party and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, you could you could go to the party and the tickets were for charity. Mm -hmm. And uh, the day of the party, just no party happened. But people donated toys. People spent money. Billy Cool did the Grinch stole Christmas. He's stealing from every children's book. He's not even coming up with his own criminal schemes. He invented his own Slugworth. He is the Grinch. (laughs) Unbelievable. Unbelievable. There's been some other stuff that I I haven't been able to corroborate that people have been writing about in the Glasgow subreddit Uh that have to do with like other events and parties that this guy is trying to throw. That uh, some of them, you know, the usual grifter stuff of some of them had famous people attached. Mm -hmm. And those famous people knew nothing about it. And had to, you know, threaten. Yeah, of course. Le- had to threaten legal, uh, legal recrimination for it. They're like, I, we, "We will sue you if you keep saying that I'm involved with this event." William McCool. Billy Cool. Yeah, very interesting. I'm trying to find anything about Billy Cool oh, here. Oh, he's he's scrubbed a lot of it. Yeah, he has. He's scrubbed a lot of it. And obviously, everything that comes up right now is just about this. Hmm. But wild. I did find the statement that he was referencing from Richard Bone, who was claiming to be the deputy director of human resources at House of Illuminati. Uh, It's just a weird post of him being like, we're not actually giving refunds. Fuck you. Um, It's just a mean response as if it's somebody that works there that is like, you guys are stupid and we hate you and we're not giving you refunds. And look, I don't know whether that guy works there or not. He but, says but he here's doesn't. What I'll tell you, it's 
he's he, he, that's what the company is doing. Whether whether he's a re- whether he's a representative for them or not, right? That is what the company did. Yeah. Uh, basically, he was like, uh, "It's it's titled, dear our valued and thoroughly literate customers." Woo. My name is Richard Bone, Deputy Director of Human Resources at House of Illuminati. There's been a lot of outrage about at the prospect of refunds. Our representative did indeed promise refunds, but it's crucial to understand that such statements were not intended to be interpreted as literally by any reasonable person. This assertion was primarily a measure to mitigate the threats of violence by unreasonable persons. Uh, I'm not gonna read this weird, like kind of like fat phobic comment he makes in here. Similarly, the allure of what was marketed was admittedly enhanced through imaging technology. This practice is commonplace amongst the industry. Visit any theme parks website, be it Disney, Universal Studios, you'll encounter photographs that have been optimistically edited. Moreover, as we have clearly stated in the fine print, a detail to which you consented upon agreement, and we bear no responsibility for any literacy challenges. The promotional materials were never meant to be taken at face value. Right. Uh, so this is somebody who is either uh, a jerk who's involved or just somebody who's doing a good goof. Yeah. Like, because the 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 point, the, the poking and prodding at people for not being able to read how many things were. Yeah. Honestly, when you look at the, when you look at their site, when we were reading it earlier, right. full of red flags. The fact that there was no actual photo of the, of the venue beforehand. Oh yeah. The fact that there was no, you know, there, there was no copy editing of any kind. But again, like this is for kids and you've got a parent that sees an ad and is just like, sure, like my kid loved Wonka. Let's sure. take him to a place that has these chocolate fountains. They don't have time to do the the research. They're not chronically online like we are. Sure. They didn't notice that it says enchanting enrichment. But you know, there have been there have been grifts like that for people like for family entertainment forever. Yeah. You know, before it was before it was advertising to you on on the internet. I remember being like in the car with my parents and seeing like a billboard on a road trip for, you know, some sort of like museum of mysteries. And my mother was like, we're absolutely not going yeah. to that. That's a scam. Right. You're going to be disappointed. You know, yeah. there's all, or, or an ad on TV for something where it's like, oh, Matt, come to the fun fair. And my mom's like, I know where that is. That's like a vacant lot. Yeah. It's, we're not going to the fun. You know what I mean? I mean, look, we all grew up asking to go to Shen Yun. <laughs> Listen, it's the beauty <laughs> and splendor of China. And that's all it is. That's, that's it. all it is. What, do you not want to see the beauty and splendor of China? Did I tell you I went to a Shen Yun once? No. Yeah. One of my friends. Was it the beauty and splendor of China? Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fans and a lot of indoctrination, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, okay. Um, there is a lot of stuff like this right mm-hmm. now. And I think what's a real bummer about it yeah. is we, we talk a lot about how there just isn't anything to do. Yeah. Like there isn't anything to do. If I step out of my house and I want to do something. Mm-hmm. Cost money to do anything. What, what am I going to do? There's There are fewer and fewer public spaces. Yeah. There are fewer and fewer um, social spaces. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are socializing less and less. And these, yeah. these curated experiences are becoming a really big deal. Yeah. They're becoming like, oh, we're going to like the Museum of Ice Cream. I feel like the Museum of Ice Cream really started it. The Museum of Ice Cream was one of the first big ones. It was like the one that was like, oh, a pop-up like selfie museum. Mm-hmm. And then there was literally the Museum of Selfies. There's been a Bubbles one. Yeah. There's been- The Museum of Failure that was here for a while that was just weird products that I didn't, didn't work. Oh, that the one. Museum of Failure was wonderful. Oh man. They tour now, but uh, yeah. That sounds awesome. There's, there are these fun pop-ups and I've gone to a few of them. I went to the Museum yeah. of Ice Cream and I yeah. thought the Museum of Ice Cream was fun. Yeah. I went to- And uh, they are all like 40 bucks to go to. Yeah. They are all overpriced. I did I the Barbie to, one. Yeah, the Barbie one was amazing, I heard. I didn't go to that one. Yeah, great. I went to uh, an Alice in Wonderland, uh, like boozy tea party thing. Sure. It was, it was fun because- there's nothing to do. Yeah. And if you advertise to me on Instagram and you say, look, it's a magical thing. I go, God damn, I don't have any magical stuff. I'd love to go see magic. I got magical bills. Yeah. They just keep, they just keep showing up. Yeah. Every time I make one bill disappear, three more show up. It's amazing. Ooh. What's that behind your ear? Oh, it's a collection agency. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so something like this is a big deal, but it's also... They're about half and half. I've been yeah. to some that are not great. I've yeah. heard about some that are 
poorly run. Oh yeah. Uh, most of them are not worth $40. No. I would I would go as far as to say, most of them you finish too quickly to have spent $40 per ticket. For sure. There was, uh, there was like a, a Blade Runner cyberpunk bar that was going on here for a little while that yeah. was like way overpriced, way too crowded. Sure. There's, there's always stuff like that, but it's, and what's interesting is because of websites like Fever mm -hmm. or these other like event websites, Eventbrite, pop, Eventbrite yeah. things like that, that just kind of pop up. Mm -hmm. You never really know who's throwing an event. Yeah. And that's- like You can see that information, but nobody looks. Sure. And that person can change who, who they are mm -hmm. with every event if they want to. Right. And it's, so it's been really fascinating to watch as word has been going around about some of these companies that throw on these pop-ups mm -hmm. that are really bad at it. Like I went to one that was supposed to be an amazing, uh, an amazing tiki night. Okay. It was like this big like tiki bar with mm -hmm. like, like burlesque performers and bands and like- Sounds great. We got in there, it was a dirt mall. It was a flea market and it was way overcrowded. And you got like one drink with your with your band or two drinks, but it's like you couldn't get to the drinks. Yeah. Because it was way overcrowded. They oversold the event. And yeah. it turns out these people are the same people that threw like another event here in town. And, and words started getting around where it's like these people put on one event that looks yeah. cool. They take cool pictures of it. Mm -hmm. And then they disappear into the night. 100%. They Richard Bone, baby. What's so funny is Netflix put on one for Glass Onion in Los Angeles. Yeah, And they the put line on was like, all the way down the block, right? And it was supposed to be a Glass Onion themed escape room, right? Right as Glass Onion was about to come out, everybody loved Knives Out. Yeah. Waited for an hour and a half in this line, mind you, and it was a free experience. Yeah, I remember I wanted to go. it was long lines. I wanted to go and I, I, by the time I signed up, it was like, ah, oh, I didn't make it. It was trash. Yeah. It was absolute garbage. A, you wait for an hour and a half in line, and mm -hmm. especially because it's free, the experience is like three minutes long. It's incredibly short. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. And all of the employees, I don't know what was happening behind the scenes, but everyone who worked there hated you. We're not a troublesome group. We're yeah. not a coming in to start shit, right? We're a, we want to make your life easier. We're going to be really nice. It's okay. You don't have to do too much for us group, right? right. Hey, I'm so mean. Everyone was so mean. So it's a, it's an escape room and there were three puzzles and the puzzles were impossible. We're, we're LARP people. We're puzzle people. We're fucking mm -hmm. nerds, right? Yeah. There's a group of like seven of us or something. Genuinely, there's just not enough time to finish them. And when you don't finish it, the employees laugh at you. That's and so, so and two people get killed off in the first one and then don't part like just can't participate anymore. Huh. They get like randomly selected to be killed. And it's genuinely random. They just get pulled out. Yeah, they just get pulled out. And then you just have to sit on the other side of like a one-way glass and watch your friends do the rest of it. That's that's a it's horrible idea. Awful. It was so bad. And the employees were so mean to you for not getting the puzzles. And we're like, okay. Now, see, I mean, you gave us 30 seconds and you explained it after the timer started. You ate up half of our timer time explaining what the puzzle was. Now, see, this is something that's really weird to me because Netflix, Netflix has an internal events company mm -hmm. or a company that they use all the time. Yeah to do certain pop-ups, but right. they do like these paid pop-ups that are like really nice experiences. And so I, I wonder the if Stranger the Things one was fabulous. The Stranger Things one was supposed to be good. I remember you and I were trying to get into that when yeah. it was happening for the longest time. Yeah. Uh, it was like a Stranger, Thing, Stranger Things drive-through experience right. during the pandemic. Yeah, we they've like, done a few now. Oh my gosh, yeah. They've done uh, they've done like the Starcourt Mall experience. Yeah. One, one of the ones that did really well for them is they did Bridgerton balls. Mm -hmm. They did Bridgerton balls in a and bunch of cities. And people said they were lovely. People had the best time. I would have loved to go to a Bridgerton ball. I had friends that went three, four times to the wow. Bridgerton ball. Uh, they said it was just a wonderful experience. Yeah. Um, you know, the glass onion thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's really weird that it turned in, that it turned out to be like that. It was so bad. It felt like such a silly grift. And like the lobby area where you wait was like beautiful. And the inside was absolutely nothing. It felt like such a silly little scam. And it's not like, oh, these people are in character. They're being mean. They just hate this job and don't want to do it. Yeah. And they do think you're all really dumb. Now they watch this puzzle all day. So they know how to do it. So sure. like, what's wrong with you for not finishing it in time? Really weird. I, you know, there's, I guess I would say there's, 
It's a shame, but there's a difference between the free experience and the paid experience, I guess. One of them's more of a marketing thing for a movie that's yeah. coming out. And the other one is more like, we have this property that's huge. And yeah. so we're going to do something based on it. Because there are all these, there are a lot of companies that do experiences that are based on things. Yeah. Uh, there's a theater here in town that does the unofficial musicals. Oh yeah. And I go to, I go to a lot of the unofficial musicals. I went to the Edward Scissorhands unofficial musical. I also went to the Edward Scissorhands unofficial so Rockwell. Good. It was yeah. just called Scissorhands. Yeah. Like, and it was great. <laughs> and it was great. And all of the, the like ladies who lunch in the neighborhood did let's, let's have a kiki. Yeah. It was fabulous. It was amazing. It was ridiculous. I, I went and I saw Point Break live. Yeah. Like, there are a lot of like cool experience things. This was clearly something that was set up by a con artist. Though. Uh -huh. I mean, this this guy, they Rolling Stone ran his books on Amazon uh, through GPT zero analysis, uh -huh. which is not I hate always to say, accurate. It's the AI that checks to see if it's AI, right? Which or, is not which, always like, accurate. It's like the internal affairs. Like, don't worry, we're the cops that make sure the cops behave. Right. All right, man. Yeah, okay. Uh, except this one is more likely to uh, to to narc. Yeah. The, the AI will narc on other AIs sure. even when it's not an AI. Right. Um, the AI has been narking on kids who have written papers. Yeah. And be like, no, that guy's an AI. <laughs> the kid's like, what? <laughs> I really am. I Mom, why didn't you tell me? Because I'm a camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they ran it through, and uh -huh. basically everything, according to GPT Zero, is mostly AI, including the author bio for Bill Cool, who describes him as a rising star of the literary world who, quote, weaves spellbinding tales that delve into the mysterious realms of fictional thrillers and gripping conspiracies. Couldn't even write his own bio. He didn't even write his own bio. God, I can't wait for the documentary. God, I can't wait for the expose documentary. <sighs> I wonder if this, this is not going to be like a fire fest because it's not big enough, but it no. will be like a very good YouTuber in the UK That's right now. That's what I'm saying. A very good YouTuber in the UK. Isn't Mooncat over there? Isn't Mooncat like real close? I don't know. I hope so. I want, I mean, look, we got it on TanaCon. Mm -hmm. I want it. I want to oh. know all about this guy. Bill, Bill Cool? That can't be his name. Hey, Bill, Bill Cool? Bill Cool, come on the show. Bill Cool, come on the show. Bill Cool, come on the show. Bill Cool, come on, come on, explain yourself. We'll listen. Yeah. We'll listen, Bill Cool. Bill Cool shows up and it's a VTuber. <laughs> it's not even a VTuber, it's a PNG tuber. It's yeah, just one of, of the course. ones that just like. <laughs> Get your PNG tuber and come on the show. Oh man, what a what a horrible thing to spend, especially from the parents' perspective. You're talking about if you bring two adults, two kids. Yeah, you're you're talking about a hundred bucks, over a hundred bucks, like 150 yeah, you're bucks. Spending 150 bucks at that point, just to just to walk up, rock up to a bounce house in a deserted that makes building. your kids cry. God, that's funny. No. No. <laughs> it's the unknown. No. No. <laughs> that's what I say whenever I encounter the unknown. No. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, my God. I But I here's the this. thing. I mm -hmm. now want to go. Mm -hmm. I want to go yeah. to the experience. If this was here, I'd go. Just like I wanted to go to Firefest. Yeah. I wish that I had been there. Yeah. I wish that I had shown up and seen one AstroTurf. Yeah. One, one, that was obviously like one of those castle themed playhouses that 100%. you get at Walmart. Yeah. And that was like the magical castle. I want to walk through full excitement. Be like, oh, is this the part where you guys dance? Yeah. Is this the dance? Is this where the chocolate is? I is bet there's chocolate here. What are you cooking up over at that lab? You got drinks for me? You got chocolates for me? What am I, is this a fizzy lifting drink? Oh, am I gonna? Oh, uh, is this one I, of the? Is this wait, one of the? I can't be upside down. No, is this one of the Wizzy Whirly woos? Yeah. Can I get a Wizzy Whirl? Yeah. Are you a wonky doodle? Say you're a wonky doodle. <laughs> say, say I'm a wonky doodle. Yeah. Hold on. Say I'm a wonky doodle. <laughs> <laughs> are you wonky doodle one or two? Oh shit. 
obsessed. <laughs> I love it so much. I uh, I wish all of all three of these actors much TikTok fame. Oh, I, man! If here, the beautiful thing is, if you were the comedian, the stand-up yeah. that played Willy, Willy Wonka that weekend, yeah, you're, the, the set after better be fire, dude. The the clubs of Glasgow for the next month and a half better be fire. We don't know if he's a good comedian. He is now. <laughs> he's got it's good a, material. It's impossible not to be. For the next three months, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. a good comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? You know when you see one of those comedians where they where they do a set that's just really about their life at that moment? Yeah. And you're like, wow, you're a great comedian. And then you see them six months later and you go, oh, no, you were just going through something. Oh, nothing happening? Yeah. Didn't, haven't really gotten out much? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. But he will at least, yeah. for the next three months, be an amazing comic. Fire. Absolutely fire sets. Oh, uh, better sets than uh, any single, any single thing within the Willy Wonka experience. Yeah. Um, I, w- I I know I say this every time. I wish I had it in me to just do a grift. I wish I had it in me not to care enough yeah. about, about other people. Yeah. Because these things, man, they seem real easy to pull off sometimes. Well, I mean, he did have to give everyone a refund. Supposedly, as far as we know. I mean, the cops have gotten involved. Not that cops are ever effective in any capacity, but he's going to have to give those refunds. I don't think he's keeping any money from this. I think this dude actually has ruined himself. Like, I think this dude is going to go fucking bankrupt from this. But what about, what about Richard Bone and his mysterious ways? He will continue I mean, to I mean, ride it, his coattails. It's easy to say that that we should take down Bill Cool for this, but yeah. what if what if Richard Bone is hiding in the shadows, using his his nefarious ways to fool us? No, no. <laughs> we said we were going to talk about other shit, but fuck other shit. Yeah, fuck other shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. This is just an episode about the the UK Willy Wonka experience. God. I love you, a bad tourist experience. Yeah. I truly do. Even here's the thing, even as an adult now, uh-huh. I still see those billboards for the Museum of Mysteries or whatever. Yeah. And I st- I pull over now. I make people pull over because I couldn't when I was a kid. Right. And they're always weird and bad. Yeah. And I always have an amazing time. Wonderful. Love it. I love a strong theme. Yes. Uh, fully on the way back from Vegas with Kaylee coming back from TwitchCon, we pulled over to stop at the uh, Area 51 Beef Jerky. Yes. We had to go see all of the weird alien statues in the Beef Jerky place. Yeah, it's just Beef Jerky place. It's just a Beef Jerky place with a ton of alien stuff in it. It's And it, a it looks concerning so cool. amount of Trump stuff. Oh, so so much, so much. A lot of Any alien, amount is a concerning amount. Aliens and MAGA hats and stuff. Well, the problem is, is they do like an alien Donald Trump, which really puts you in the position of like, I can't tell if you guys are clowning on him or down with him. Like you really can't tell with a lot of Trump fans because they're so absurd. Yeah. Where you're like, this would be fucking ridiculous for anyone to do about someone they respected except for a MAGA bro. Only yeah. a MAGA bro would think this is cool. So I'm like, uh, this could really go either way. Yeah, there's always an undercurrent of darkness and strangeness. Yeah. Which I think is, once again, right, kind of part of the draw is like, I know this is going to be bad, but what kind of bad is this going to be? Yeah. It's like when I made everybody on the way home from the Grand Canyon, I made everybody go, we went like an hour and a half out of our way to go to the Flintstones theme park that was built in the 50s. It's so good. I want to go so bad. It's, it was built in the 50s when people cared about the Flintstones and there were no theme parks yeah. and you had to drive that route to get anywhere. And it's just hot, concrete, strange looking Flintstones mm-hmm. and sad people. It yeah. was it was ugly and gnarly and wonderful. And I had the best time. Uh, I truly love stuff like this. The dream. Anyth- anytime, hey, if y'all know of any really good kind of tourist trappy stuff, particularly like in the in the southwest. Yeah. Let us know. It'd be awfully convenient for it to be near here. But yeah. like I wanted to go to Nara so bad. I wanted to do Nara Dreamland more than anything in this whole world. Oh, that was not sure. a grift. That was a, a a victim of circumstance. Yeah. But a garbage tourist trap. And yeah. God, I wanted to see Nara it. Dreamland of course was was the Disneyland before Japan got a Disneyland, but uh-huh. it wasn't like it was licensed and then it wasn't licensed. Yeah, and essentially then, in the development, Walt yeah. Disney backed out and was like, actually, I don't think Nara has enough tourists, but the structures were all built and shaped like Disneyland. So they had to repaint everything to be 
Legally distinct from Disneyland. Yeah. So they ran it for a while and then it was shut down. A lot of people uh, would go and just go to the abandoned site. And it's officially been torn down it's now. It's been torn down now. You can't go to Nara Dreamland. Ripped to Nara Dreamland. Hey, pour one out for Nara Dreamland. Pour one out if anybody has ever been to, was, was ever a, a Florida tourist at a certain time. Pour one out for the Mystery Fun House. Sounds awesome. One of the favorite things that I, of my entire life. Pour one out for every roadside attraction that, yeah. that doesn't get any visitors anymore. I want to go to every single Let's one. Let's tour. Let's just tour roadside attractions. And if you and if you have a bad pop up, mm -hmm. we'll go as influencers. And it yeah. doesn't matter how bad your pop up is, we will post a video saying we love it. <laughs> we true like really just let us it. If it's bad, yeah. we're gonna be like this is so terrible. We love it. Now courting sponsors for the Sage and Anthony tour of the U.S. for roadside attractions. Roadside attractions, pop up museums and other cons. We want to see them all and we love them all. And we're honestly not, uh, we're not critical. No. We like them. We have a great time we, at most yeah. things. Yeah. That's it, everybody. That's our entire show. Really, we weren't kidding. Thank you so much for joining us. We do the show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. And we appreciate you getting up and being here, whether you're catching it live on Twitch, you're watching on YouTube later, or you're listening in podcast form. Yeah, we really appreciate you, uh, everything you do to support the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Shelly Von Miller in the live studio audience says, set up a Patreon for your travel show. The Patreon exists. It's true. Patreon.com slash Pixel Circus. You Look, get stuff. We can do, maybe one day, maybe one day we'll run a, a crowdfund for our travel show just to go to roadside attractions, pop-ups, and other grifts. That's right. But the, you know, the more, the more we make every month, the more we get to do every month. It's very true. You can check that out at patreon.com slash pixel circus. We have a lot of lovely new people joining over there and a lot of content going out over there. So thank you very much for being there. If you are watching on YouTube, something you can do for free is like the video. Leave a comment of your favorite roadside attraction. Yeah. Let us know what your favorite grift is. Yeah. What, what you like to you like to play three card money with the youth? Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and hey, we also appreciate it when you uh, when you tweet about the show, when mm -hmm. you share the show with friends. Let yeah. people know when we're going live. Just let people know that they might enjoy what we do here. Mm -hmm. uh, we really appreciate that, and word of mouth does so 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 much. So we appreciate everybody who does yeah. that. We also appreciate everybody who directly gives us money. During the show, <laughs> we're gonna through, go, we're gonna go through everyone who did that here live on Twitch. However, first, Anthony. Yes. What else you got going on? Oh, I'm just mostly, I'm just mostly sad that I didn't get to go to Fire Festival or DashCon or TanaCon. Okay. Where well, are you sad about that? I'm sad about that everywhere on the internet at a Carboni, uh -huh. except for on Twitch where I'm at Anthony Carboni. Nice. How about you, Sage? Uh, I'm sad everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. Uh, live on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. How about you, Alex? Where are you sad? <laughs> uh, I'm sad on the internet on Twitter at Alder underscore Mancy, um, and also on my website, alexteplis.com. You shouldn't go there, but it exists. <laughs> yeah. is, is it sad? <laughs> it's just my portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, so let's hope not. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's really not sad. Actually, it's great. Um, and speaking of things, uh, go check out the announcement about the Daggerheart open play test for absolutely no reason. Okay. Uh, nice. Okay. Okay. Well. okay. All, All right. right. Maybe we will. All right. All right, BBs, we love you so much. Thank you for spending your morning with us and we will see you on Friday. Bye, BBs. Bye.